T Bro in the morning, Rosenberg, Laura Styles, Back. Justin Gatlin, Olympics. <laughs> 2016 yo, yo, yo. Rio. He's about to take out Usain Bolt. Get oh, this gold say, back in. Can you see? Are you very much hoping that Usain Bolt is healthy enough to compete? He will be healthy. And, and I'm a competitor, man. I want to see us in the record book. That's right. See this bus, man? I can live in this bus forever. I want to be able to look and say, as an old man, talk to my grandkids. Yeah. Like, look, this is your <laughs> grandfather here with Usain Bolt. You know, I, I want to do that. Thank you, Justin, for always inspiring me ever, like, ever since I was a little kid. And he's the reason I keep on watching. Oh, yeah. Thank you for another day that you have brought upon us. Let us be enriched and empowered by the strength and the wisdom that you have placed upon us. Let us come together as a culture, as people, to be able to uplift each other, be stronger, be able to lift our future up and our kids, and even honor our past. What are your events this year? 100 meters, 200 meters, and, and the relay. So you would have Bolt in all of those? Yes. And how scary a proposition is that? When we see each other, we know we have to be on our A game. But have you beaten him before? Yes, I have. Really? Out there. What year was that? In 2013. What was different that time? I just study the races, man. I just study and look at how he competes, how he runs. I look at what I need to change, what my flaws are, and I try to put that into my race. Our brother Justin Gatlin was headed off to Brazil. Make sure that he comes back with the gold. With America in the current situation that we're in, right? There's a lot of turmoil. Um, and we, we've been spending a lot of time talking about Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. about police brutality, and now about these horrible acts by psychotic lunatics against the police. You know, does all that stuff go away when you put on that red, white, and blue? How does it feel to represent the country during a really uh, interesting time? I can tell you when I step into a stadium, and it doesn't even matter, it can be the Olympics or World Championships, and you see a small section, small section that has maybe eight people who are waving this big American flag. And when you see that flag, you get energized because it don't matter if it's 80, 80,000, 800, those eight people right there are giving you energy. And most of those people there are white people. They're looking at me like I'm their son or their brother or their father, you know? You're us. their hero. I mean, I guess you can say that. Yeah, I'm their hero at that point in time, you know, and they want to see me do the best I can do for all of them. Your son's pressuring you a lot about beating Usain Bolt, though. Oh, man. You know, he's he pressured me to beat everybody. That's that's him. You know, uh, How does he, he do it? He's only six. He, he go out there and be like, all right, daddy, you got to go out there and win. You got to win for me. I mean, when he says what? stuff like that, man, you know. Uh, when, when, you, when your kid says stuff like that, how do you, how do you, how can you go out there and not try to win? In um, 2015, before we went out onto the track, the three other guys I was with, their fathers, just like me, we were racing against, you know, Jamaica's A team. You know, had Usain, everybody on the squad. I looked at those guys who all have sons, just like me. And I said, you know what? Let's not do it for us. When we step on that track, let's do it for our kids. It was like an aha moment. And when I tell you when we stepped on the track and those guys delivered, they delivered big. They went out there for something different than just themselves.